So hello and welcome to Swipe Team's final presentation for our Vigilant app. I'm Cameron and my primary roles in the group are UX designer, client liaison, and technical writer. Um, this is the poster for the final presentation and was intended for the reaction showcase. Now we will move on to our agenda for this presentation. In the agenda for today's presentation, we will be going over the introduction and project summary, as well as our UX design process. Then we will be discussing our technology research and work showcasing many of the Vigilant app's internal features and functions. And finally, we'll be having a Q&A to answer any questions you may have. We are Swipe Team, and we're responsible for making the Vigilant app. Here's all the members of Swipe Team, as well as our primary roles in the group. So we can move on to our uh, project summary. What is the Vigilant app? The Vigilant app is made to allow border service officers, or BSOs, to maintain eye contact with travelers, while validating the passport details of the person they're interviewing through a voice-activated app that will then relay the statistics of the traveler back to the BSO. Now Natalia will be covering the project's pain points. Hello, I'm Natalia and I'm a developer of the Swipe team. The pain points. So we have two main problems to focus on during the development of the app. The first was the lack of eye contact and body language of the traveler. And the second, the time consumed during the process of getting access to the databases. So now I let me to talk about the solutions. Thanks, Natalia. I'm Emin Guvan. I'm the UX designer of the Swipe team. I also took a role in testing the overall functionality of the app. The feature of voice control will definitely expedite the officer's workflow. Vigilant has a visual UI as well, which is used as a confirmation of the user's entries. In order to achieve this, we professionally implemented all UX design stuff, which will be presented to you by my friend Joa. Hello, so my name is Joao, and I am the design lead in this project. And my role was supervising the design team and work together during all UX design process to bring an efficient user experience and make sure that app follows both iOS and CBSA guidelines. In the very beginning of our project, right after we received the briefing from a client, we start the UX design process, going through research, analysis, design, prototype, and testing. We are going to, uh, to show a little bit more details in the next slides. And now I mean is gonna talk about the research phase. And product research. When we looked at the market, we noticed that the most of the voice apps are like eye translator for language translation, Dragon for dictation, seeing AI for visually impaired people, and SideChef for recipe videos. Basically, our product research helped us to investigate the most efficient UIs for the voice apps. For our user research, we interviewed six BSOs. This helped us to identify the two main goals of the users during the interviews with the travelers. Accurate information in a shorter time is crucial for them. And plus, while they are validating their passport information, they wanna have more eye contact with the traveler to interpret the traveler's body language. We also confirmed that their workplace environment can be busy and loud. And about their concerns, they commonly said that some names are difficult to pronounce or, and also the ambient noise can be trouble to communicate with the app. They emphasized that the BSO's safety is paramount. As a desirable feature, they would like to insert multiple travelers in order to speed up the process. Overall, all of them agreed on the idea that the voice app can definitely be helpful. And my friend Natalia will elaborate these on the personas created by using these interviews. Okay, so I'm guessing you might be asking why do we create personas for the development of the app? Well, we did that so we can put ourselves in the shoes of the real person who will be using the app, our target audience. Looking into their frustrations, goals, and also about them and their skills that are important when using the app. Okay, so for the personas, we have a total of four. One of our persona was a land border officers and the other three were airport um, officers. So here we have Justin. Uh, he says that speed is important to me in my interview. So having good tools and accurate information will likely help expedite my usual work process. And then um, 
So then with our persona, we pass to the scenarios that basically what we are trying to do is to put the app uh, in context of use. So if the persona have the app in their work, uh, how will they use it? How the app will interact with the persona in the environment? And what kind of tasks will the persona want to achieve as well as the steps to get there? So now I pass to Yao, he's going to talk about information architecture. Okay, after we understand the environment of working needs, we could create the information architecture. This was a new challenge to us because usually information architecture is a regular process, but at this time we had to tweak a little bit because our project was based into full voice controls combined with the interface. So in this project, we had to include path for voice commands and responses, user voice and typing. Here is a small piece of the information architecture. Now we pass to the design process and the first step was to create a paper prototype showing the user interface. Uh, this step was important to understand if the voice control flow was matching with the visual content and the screens. After the paper prototypes, uh, we'll, the next step was to start following the guidelines. For the fonts, since we're developing iOS, we use San Francisco Pro font, and we also follow the iOS standard guidelines. And finally, we use CBSA color guide to the colors in the app. For the paper prototype to the low fidelity wireframes, we add visual content as well as feedback from our client. For example, an option to add multiple travelers at the same time as accordions, which you can click to open or collapse it, and an icon when the microphone is active. After that, we add a visual design, this screen showing three options in colors, and the first one was picked by the client. At this time, we tweak the design a little bit again. Uh, we changed the first screen to chips instead of accordions, we added the score, a range of colors, and we change a way to display when the microphone is active. The microphone is active, we're gonna show a little bit later. We also developed the interactive, interactive mockup where we used to perform the user testing. Now Ami is gonna talk about the user testing. Thanks, Joe. We did the usable to testing with three testers from CBSA to test the three possible tasks that BSOs can encounter during their interviews. The average time for the completion of tasks was four minutes, and all testers found the app fairly easy to use, logical, and simple. The common concerns were the voice responses of the app were too long and the difficulty for some long international names. Now Natalia will mention about technology development topics. Okay, so for the tech side, we start with the research state that includes technology research and features and platform. So basically what we did in this part was to look and compare the technologies that we will potentially use for the development of the app, as well as the features needed in the app to achieve the end goal. Then with the research done, we passed to the analysis stage where we had the data structure and high level architecture. Here we map the flow of how the, uh, the technologies will be used in the app from the client side to the server side and vice versa. After having our data structure and high-level architecture ready, we could move to the development stage where we had to put hands on the code and show a pretty decent uh, tech demo. And finally, testing that what we did was software testing, debugging, and now last, the deployment document. So now I pass to uh, David with the technology research. Thanks, Natalia. Hi, I'm David. I'm the tech lead of Swipe, and today I'll be talking to you about the technology we used, an overview of the features, and later on the tech demo. So we chose to use iOS because of its offline support for voice recognition and speech synthesis. We are using the speech recognition, the speech synthesis, and the proximity sensors native iOS APIs. And the backend has been built to kind of emulate what the client might have, but we don't know exactly what they do have. So we just kind of made our own. Next slide. Because of using offline speech recognition, we had no choice but to use iOS 13. So with that, we also decided to use Swift UI. And our backend server was built on Node.js with Express.js. And this is all connected to a MySQL database, which has our fake travelers in it. And now for a little bit on our features. So we're using speech recognition in order to transcribe all the speech into text and then process the text appropriately, be it a voice command or input into a field. Speech synthesis is being used in order to communicate back to the user or the border officer, whatever they have said for the input, anything 
for results in their search queries, available commands, or any other useful information. The voice and manual input was really important to support because we have to make sure that the border officer is able to take the phone out and correct something very quickly by putting it back away and still have the voice commands be active. And after all of this was done, we managed to create a fully voice accessible and controlled app in order for the border officers to be able to go through their people faster. Hi, I'm Mohamed Akal and I'm the project lead. And I'll be going to further details about the features. So we have a language selection alert, which would show up the first time the user runs the app. And we also have um, implemented the functionality to delete a traveler. This can be done manually or through a voice command. And we also added in visual indicators to improve or enhance the overall user experience. And upon submission, um, the application will search the database and for the inputted traveler or traveler or travelers and return the results. Next, we have results screen. Um, at the top, we have the search travelers list. This is the same list that we had on the traveler screen, sorry, on the search screen. Below that, we have the total matching results which were returned. And after that, we have the traveler details that was searched. And then we have the record score and the traveler score is a value that is used to determine the traveler's threat level. This can be an initial indicator to the operating BSO that this travel has one or many potential problematic statistics that warrants officer's attention. And after that, we have the matching results accuracy and the accuracy of the traveler is based off the provided fields for the traveler on the search page. And finally, we have the reset session um, button. Um, this can be also done manually or through a voice command. Um, this will reset the app so that the BSO can start over. Yeah. Next, we have the settings screen, and we'll be able to toggle between languages here. So we have English and French, and we'll be able to adjust the speech rate, followed by the commands list, and finally, we have this disclaimer. And I'll be moving it back to David here so that he would show us the technical demo. Thank you, Akel, and now we'll be going into the live demo. Input surname. Smith. You said S-M-I-T-H. Next. Input first name. Julia. You said J-U-L-I-A. Add traveler. New traveler, input surname. Test. You said T E S T. Remove traveler. Remove traveler test. Currently editing Julia Smith. Country. Input country. Brazil. You said Brazil. Add traveler. New traveler. Input surname. A K E L. You said A K E L. Submit. Two results were found. The most accurate results is Julia Smith. Accuracy 100%. Score 10%. Date of birth March 20th, 1990. Document number. 3G68Y, country, Brazil, records history, no results found. Next traveler. Five results were found. The most accurate results is Muhammad Akel. Accuracy, 100%. Score, 20%. Date of birth, May, 30th, 1993. Document number, P32525. Country, Palestine, records history, no results found. Reset. Starting a new session. Input surname. Smith. 
John. Submit. One results were found. The most accurate results is John Smith. Accuracy, 95%. Score, 17%. Date of birth, May, 30th, 1993. Document number, P867867. Country, Canada. Records history, criminal activity, very criminally active. Warrants, no results found. Police enforcement, no results found. Reset. Starting a new session. Input surname. Here in the settings, we have the language selector for English and French. We have our speaking rate selector for slow, normal, and fast. We have the list of the commands so that you can come in and look at them. And down at the bottom, we have the disclaimer. Now back to Natalia for the next phase. So next phase, any recommendations? Uh, so uh, for the next phase of the app, we would recommend to implement or look into these four points. OCR, that stands for Optical Character Recognition. With this, the VSO will be able to take a picture of the passport so that you don't have to input anything manually. Then we have custom voice commands. So our client might be interested in implementing new voice commands that will suit better some of their needs. It can be a secret word that uh, will help them to keep more confidentiality during the interaction with the app in front of the travelers. Um, then we have the phonetic alphabet. This will um, be something really helpful to implement because it, it can prevent and reduce mistakes when spelling difficult names. Uh, then we have the skip speak back. Once the VSO feels more comfortable with the app, the skip speak back voice command will allow the VSO to prevent the app from uh, repeating back all the commands available. This will reduce the time spent in the interaction with the app. So now I press the camera. Thanks, and yeah, that concludes today's presentation. We thank you all for your time and listening, and we hope you enjoyed. We will now open the floor to a Q&A. Thank you.